And if the touch of another cell does not prevent cancer, then you have cancer. Whereas if the touch of another cell prevents replication, then you don't have cancer. So it's literally the physics of touch. So why is the physics of touch the absolute clue to the physics of cancer? It's really very simple. Cancer and AIDS are opposites here. Cancer is a membrane that's too hard. AIDS is a membrane that's too leaky, too soft. Okay? Biology exists precisely because there is a tightrope between liquid and crystal. Okay? And so in that tightrope, we're dancing between AIDS and cancer. It's a wonderful metaphor. It's instructional. <laughs> so the reason that cancer happens is because the way the cell works is it grabs the protein chains and changes the wavelength of food from a long wave up a massaged caduceus enzymatic ladder to very short waves. And when metabolism in, is done in the cell, the cell's fun of metabolizing is taking long waves and braiding, up, braiding them up a caduceus, a xylophone, to short waves. So when metabolism is finished, the cell has produced high quality ultraviolet light, something called blue fire or sex juice. It's the blue light district. And ask any biophysicist and he will tell you that high quality ultraviolet light is the only motor driving cell metabolism. So from the cell's point of view, the work of making high quality blue fire ultraviolet light is the fun of metabolizing. So now the cell is done eating its food and it made its ultraviolet sex juice. Now the cell has to say, well, what am I going to do with my sex juice? What am I going to do? What am I going to do with my sex? What am I going to do? Okay. Just like a promiscuous teenager. Okay. So what, what happens at that point is the high quality ultraviolet light is the trigger when there is a certain threshold of present high quality ultraviolet light when the cell has to use that electrical inertia bouncing back to center to motorize meiosis and mitosis. So physics will only discover the electrical trigger to cancer when they measure the excess of the ultraviolet field that results from the inability of the cell to distribute its ultraviolet light. It's blue fire cocoon. Remember in cocoon, if this is floor, floor play, we're in trouble. So then what happens is the egg becomes, the cell becomes egg-shaped if it's healthy because it becomes a projectile for ultraviolet blue fire. So tantra foreplay and uh, massage move the ultraviolet cocooning near the tailbone ultimately. And when that turns inside out, the tailbone becomes a straw with vestigial horsehairs as waveguides for the ultraviolet. And you have suction up the spine of the ultraviolet called Kundalini and Tantra. The pump for that process is called sacrocranial and it's a peristalsic pumping wherein the heart's low frequency sounds function as a snake charmer. And so then what you have is the ultraviolet juices coming out the high brain. Well, the classic cancer is where you had a way of distributing the ultraviolet. Your lover touched you on your breasts, and then your lover died, and then you get cancer of the breasts. Because you had no way of expressing your passion, which was to say, delivering your ultraviolet juices. Which is why any activity that delivers passion from the body, the ultraviolet cocoon, which is visible, is an activity to reduce cancer. Now, AIDS, on the other hand, is an activity where you've dissipated so much of the ultraviolet and I give the example from the psychological literature. When they had a statistical group of people who were HIV positive and they asked a battery of questions, the question that was most statistically successful in predicting the first to die was the question, would you do an unasked favor? Those who answered yes of the AIDS population were the first to die. So you understand this idea of a leaky membrane not able to hold its own charge. Yeah? Emotions are mapped as musical wave functions. And I give the example of the Centix work from 
soulinvitation.com slash touch. The question for the video camera here is how do emotions fit into this? So just briefly, I will just show you this little animation from the website on, based on the Centix, based on the Centix work of Manfred Kleins, who started here in Australia. He was a concert violinist, and he noted that the geometry of the way he would touch would determine whether people would cry when he played his violin. So the musical wave shape of the emotions here in how to touch were a simple cascade. This was the work on how to touch. And this cascade here, the mathematical opposite to cancer is a wave. Here's, here's the cell membranes we just talked about. Here is a healthy cell. The, actually, this should be a little bit more pointed at one end the other. But the aspect ratio of a healthy cell approaches golden mean ratio. Whereas a cancer cell will almost always be measurably closer to a sphere. Okay? And that's because a healthy cell is able to project its ultraviolet juices because the aspect ratio functions as a squirt gun. It makes it into a pine cone for screwing inertia through the speed of light. Here are the waveforms of, of emotion now. This is the Centix work. Manfred Kleins notices that when he touches his violin string, you touch the violin string in a way, this is a change in pressure over time. This is the beginning of a squeeze. When you're squeezing someone to say, I love you, you have the beginning of the squeeze, and you have the end of the squeeze, and you have the point of maximum squeeze. So a love hug has three events, beginning of squeezing, end of squeezing, and point of maximum squeezing. This is time, and this is amount of pressure. Okay? So this language of emotion was proven to be a universal language. It existed around the world. Okay? The musical shape of emotion as a change in pressure over time. Now notice that when you express joy, there's a geometric analysis which I did for these waves, which Manfred Klein did not do. Okay? My geometric analysis of the waves shows that joy reaches a point of maximum one-sixth into the duration of the, of the touch. So that when you touch someone to say, I'm joyful, your squeeze reaches its maximum one-sixth into the duration of the squeeze, yes? Whereas if you touch someone to say, I love you, the moment of maximum pressure arrives much later into the squeezing process. This is the electric Kool-Aid acid test for the academic rating of love hugs. <laughs> In case you should ever need that. <laughs> if your lover ever comes to you and says, you don't hug me like my other lover does, you simply study the academic literature. And, and so the way, the way you then tell if you have succeeded is after you have administered your academic test love hug to your experimental huggy, you ask the question, did you feel a tingle in your DNA? And, and, and if, they, if they said yes, then in fact uh, you have succeeded in your attempt to deliver love. And what is the reason in physics why because when you deliver a correct love hug, the point of maximum pressure at golden mean ratio into the event is tantrically delayed much later than the maximums here. So a love hug reaches its maximum pressure much later. And what happens then is you create a ratio called the golden mean ratio where the whole part is in the same ratio to the big part as the big part is the little part. So this wave and this wave, well, this wave here interferes with this wave, creating this wave. Then this wave interferes with this wave, creating this wave. You get it? And the wave keeps adding and multiplying its spin until what began as a phonon wave cascades in perfect translated vorticity down the yellow brick road to Oz to your DNA. So mechanically, if your love hug was accurately administered, mechanically, you have administered spin to the DNA as a phonon wave. Doesn't that add to the romance? 